Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. Hi guys and welcome to the Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast, a show about all things Port Adelaide Footy Club. As always, I'm your host, Macca19, but I'm without the regular co-host, Fishing Rick, this evening. So we've got two special guests on. Uh, the first you'll remember from last year's draft podcast. Um, he's worked for two AFL clubs as a South Australian scout. Um, a big welcome back to Mission Possible. Hi, Macca. How are you? Good, buddy. Thanks for coming back. No worries. It's good to be back. That's the way. And our second guest this evening is someone whose phantom drafts are the stuff of legend and also he isn't a port supporter. Um, he will be able to provide us with a, a fantastic inside look at these players. Uh, a big welcome to Nightmare. Good day. How are you going? Good. Ready Thanks to for start. joining us. Now, Mish, uh, for those that didn't know about our podcast this time last year, can you just give us a little bit of a brief overview of your prior role um, as a talent scout? I did it for two AFL clubs, as you just mentioned. Um, basically, it was just a local SA scout looking at the South Australian talent, reporting to the relevant managers and then getting involved in, um, once you source the talent, then evaluating their strengths and weaknesses and trying to work out who and who wouldn't adapt to AFL footy. Fantastic. And what years did you do these? Uh, 2005 was my first draft and I was at that club until 2008 and then from 2009 to 2012 I was with the second club Fantastic. before family commitment made me pull the pin okay <laughs> yeah these children cause havoc unbelievable I don't know. Yeah, yeah. nightmare you've been doing these phantoms for a number of years now on big footy um what's your sort of role with junior footy how much junior footy do you watch throughout the year Yep, so I get down the TAC Cup many of the weeks during the year, not quite every week, but I'm working towards that, and I work from next season. I also watch quite a bit of the Sandfall and the Waffle VFL, so I get the tapes of those weekly games, and, and I also get down to some of the VFL games that are of interest as well. And then also a bit of the Neeful as well, they've got some games on YouTube, so that's also a bit of interest as well. Beautiful. That's quite a lot of footy. Where do you fit Collingwood in? Uh, yeah, sometimes I get down the VFL games. Yep. So that's a bit of fun as well. Uh, well, look, let's talk about this year's draft, the 2014 draft. Um, how do we think it's going to go in terms of the quality of players this year? Um, yeah, so there's quite a number of key position players for starters. Um, so there's just a real depth of it on the top end. So the first round particularly, you'll just see a number of them going. Um, from South Australia specifically, Durden is one to look at. For us, Sam Durden, he'll probably yep. go... Maybe somewhere around the 10 mark. Um, otherwise, the depth, I think there'll be guys for most clubs that you'll find, and there'll be some who slide into the later rounds. So clubs such as Port Adelaide might be able to strike a bargain. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty much an average draft, not a good draft or a bad draft. There's, mm -hmm. like, I suppose when we were looking at it, an average year you'd have 35 players on your list which you'd sit there and you'd feel confident that they'll be AFL footballers. And then from there on after, you're then trying to pick out those that might become AFL footy. And that's where I'm seeing this draft is around that way, where last year I think you were getting around pick 20, you had about 25 on your list and then it was a struggle. Let's, uh, let's do a bit of a, a phantom for the first round because um, it's going to be pretty interesting how it's all going to play out this year. Um, obviously, St Kilda with the first pick. It looks likely that they'll probably go with uh, uh, Petraka, who's a midfielder, quite an explosive midfielder. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I think they're a bit nuts um, for overlooking McCartan. Yeah, McCartan's had a terrific year. It went, well, he, sorry, he hasn't had a terrific year in the sense that he's been injured, but certainly when he's been on the field, he's been, I'd say, probably the dominant player of the under-18s. There's yeah. just probably a few queries all up, I'd say. Um, just with the diabetes, I'm just wondering how is he going to cope with that? The, the demands in AFL clubs are just huge these days and only growing with the level of professionalism. So it depends on how he works with that, but he does certainly have the chance to become one of, if not the dominant player in the draft. So, yeah, given St Kilda's needs, he'd certainly be a logical choice. Yeah. No doubt. 
I mean, they must be pretty confident they can land a, a key position forward with one of their later picks. Mm. And with two picks in the 20s as well, they do have a chance. A guy like Reese McKenzie, who I'm pretty big on personally, yep. just, yeah, he's such a big guy, but he actually has the strong hands overhead. He's quick on the lead. He can leap, so... He's not like someone like Hawkins, say, who just purely overpowers, but he's someone who can actually take the mark. So. And Patrek is a, a worthy number one pick? Yeah. Um, I'd say so, yeah. Um, he's, I guess, probably more the like, role to take the more high probability of making. Maybe not the very best to come out of the draft overall, but in saying that, you can pick him with confidence, given he's so good forward and so good through the midfield as well. I think that's one issue with McCartan at number one. You don't want to be a club these days picking number one, having to wait for him to mature. The pressure on the guys that go number one Mm. is so huge. They, you really need to be able to roll them out and play straight away. And Petrarca will be able to do that, and he'll play quality footy. There's no, he's not as though you're just picking a big kid who's going to be ready to play first year. He's going to be a great player. Oh, yeah, same story. Like, um, Petraka is like another Dustin Martin where he's just that powerful. He can play forward, midfield. You can put him deep in the front half if you want to, and he'll just one-out beat you one-on-one. And Brayshaw's another one where he'll just be immediate impact. They can both play from round one if there's a position for him. Yeah. Well, you would think that uh, Brayshaw and McCartan would be locks to go to Melbourne at this point? I would think so. Yeah, yep. certainly Brayshaw. Um, there's... Some slight talk about maybe Melbourne looking at leather, but look, if McCartan's there, I'd say it's probably the high percentage. GWS, pick four. It looks likely that they might go with someone like Pickett. Yeah, I've got him in there at this stage. Um, I'd just say they need a bit of lightning there. They've got... They don't really have any small players. They've really drafted tall overall, and that's even just beyond the key position players. But even just their midfield's pretty tall overall. So they can definitely accommodate him, and he'll definitely inject some energy and run into that team a bit like a Lewis Jetta where he can just really burn it out there. Uh, pick five, Collingwood. Who are you thinking you would like to see in uh, in Magpie Colours next year? Yeah, Laverde. Yeah, Laverde looks like a chance anyway at that pick. Um, yeah, it's just so versatile. He can play anywhere. Good on a flank, potentially good through the midfield. He has the evasive skills, great user of the ball. So there's a bit to work with. Strong one-on-one when he's played forward, so... Yeah, he could certainly be a good option, no doubt. Yep. Bit of talk today about uh, Langford going that early. Yeah, he's another option as well. He's just so strong overhead, very mobile, tall, great user of the ball. So, yeah, he'd be another very suitable option as well for the Pies at five. Yep. I, I yeah, love the way Langford goes about it. Um, given the late-year birthday, he's got real scope to improve. Maybe not like a Bonton Pally, where Bonton Pally had more of that contested ball game to him, but... Nonetheless, he can, in his own right, pave out a good pathway and have yep. a good career. Uh, GWS, with the next two picks, it looks likely that they'll pick at least one key position defender with uh, at least one of those picks. Yeah, that's the way the rumours are going, and Hugh Goddard at the moment is being the one really quite heavily linked to GWS, so he looks like a good chance. He's, yep. In the past, he mostly played as a key forward. I found he was a bit out of position up forward, if anything. His ground-level ability wasn't great overall, I'd say. And since he's moved back, I've actually found he's looked really good. He's been able to contain his opponent, beat him one-on-one, but then he can also take the intercept marks, read it well down back. So it's a, for me, I'd say it's a suitable position for him long-term. Yeah, Goddard's definitely a back man. That's, yeah. That stood out this year, that his best foot is there. He's disciplined enough to do key position. Um, guys that over 195s that work, move as well as what he does and with his skills are hard to come by. And GWS need to strengthen their back line. So I think I think that'd be crazy not to pick Goddard in. Yeah, they've got a few options, certainly. Um, maybe a Degoe, maybe a Lever, maybe someone else entirely. So, yeah, GWS have options and it'll be interesting to know the way they go. I certainly don't know at this stage beyond the media rooms. I wouldn't surprise if they take a punt on someone like Cock too. Yeah, you never quite know. Um, even at 11 to West Coast, he was considered a bit of a reach just purely because he's only played the one game this year, but he's certainly got the talent just with that pure explosiveness. If you saw him on the grand final or the pre-game before the grand final, it was absolutely phenomenal. Got it, yeah. got it hit down to him, took it all the way, ran to 40 and just kicked the goal. He did it all on his own. So 
When they did, it wasn't, wasn't just once in the game he did that. He did it a couple of times. Yeah, he's about. Right. Now, Gold Coast pick eight. That's going to be a bit of an interesting one. Will they pick someone like Duggan, or do you think they might go with uh, someone like Weller instead? Yeah, a bit of talk around Duggan recently. Um, with Weller, there's been a bit of talk that maybe he doesn't want to stay there. Maybe he wants to move back to Victoria because of his brother. Personally, I don't know which way they go, but um, yeah, potentially Duggan would be my pick at eight at this stage. Pick nine for Collingwood. They've already locked in uh, Darcy Moore, which uh, which seems like a very very good pick for them. Yeah, absolute bargain. Yeah, absolute bargain, isn't it? Yeah, he's tall, amazing at ground level, amazing athlete, strong overhead. Probably doesn't quite have the performances on the board, but nonetheless has shown the promise. He's played much of the year as a key defender, but when he's played forward on the rare occasion, he's really shown something. Yeah, he's a big I've... chance to become the, the best player out of this draft. He's in the mix, potentially. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it would be interesting. Who, who would you prefer? Him or McCartan? I'd be going for more, actually. I feel he's probably a bit safer. Um, McCartan, when he's played, has been more dominant, but I'd say more overall based on his mix of traits, being 199, great attitude and work ethic from everything I hear. Just actually seeing him interviewed, he's been really terrific, and he just seems like someone where he will get the most out of his ability. So yeah, yeah. I'm like you. That's, yeah. I, I look at this draft, and it would be a kind of competition between him um, Petrarca and um, Heaney for number one if it was just a normal picking situation. Well, pick 10 is uh, is Geelong. Um, Peter Wright, he's someone that might be in the mix there. Yeah, he potentially could be, and he's been an unexpected slider, actually. Um, he, start, he went into the year as a fancied number one overall pick, being 203 centimetres, 102 kilos, amazing athlete. Very clean overhead as well. Great long kick. He can kick at 55 metres kick the long goals, so he's got ability, but it's just a case of maybe he hasn't had the performances on the board. Some of the finals performances weren't great overall. And also one-on-one, -on -one, I find they can just drop his mark sometimes, yep. which you really need to do as a guy that big. Yep. From the little I've seen of Peter Wright, just wonder whether he's mentally tough enough when it comes to the crunch. And I think that's probably why he's sliding a little bit is... He's not a guarantee to make it at AFL level like you thought he would be at the beginning of the year. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised, in looking at Geelong's list also, if they sit there and go, if Durden's still there at 10, that they'll go for a key defender. Yeah, and that would make sense for them as well in their situation. Just given they're just sort of starting to lose that back line, they're just starting to age a bit down back, and they'll eventually need someone to take over for Harry Taylor. Now, West Coast is the next pick with uh, with pick 11. It looks likely that they might go with Cockatoo. They've spoken to him quite a bit. They also might look for a key position defender as well. Yeah, they've got certainly a few options. Um, yeah, Cockatoo's one they've certainly talked to a fair bit, and he makes a bit of sense in that he can really inject some pace. Um, they might potentially look at a Weller, um, maybe a Levert, or if a um, Dugowie drops, they could all be options. Um it's not super clear exactly what West Coast do at 11 at this stage, but it'll be interesting viewing no matter which way they go, and it could change the landscape of the next 10, potentially. Yep. Richmond yep. at pick 12. Who are we thinking there? I've got Durden there at this stage, but um, equally they could go with a midfielder, and there's been a fair bit of talk that they'll go for a midfielder. Um, potentially right if he's there could be another option. Yep. yep. And this is where the go is probably the ones that's going to shape the draft more than any other player because he could go anywhere in this first 20 picks. Oh, yeah, and right. to go, he's there for Richmond at 12. I'd definitely yeah, yeah. Pick strongly, strongly in the mix, if not the selection. Yeah. Just yeah. a question of whether he goes that late. Yeah, yeah you've seen a fair bit of to go. Mm. Does, does he get enough of the footy for how good he is? I'd like to see him get a bit more of it. Um, he's played a bit forward as well, so he's mixed that time between forward and midfield. I like him in the sense that he's... Very strong overhead, but yeah, my criticism would be the same, where I'd just like to see him get a bit more of the ball, which is why, say, as a Collingwood fan, I, would, I wouldn't I would be inclined to take him at five. But no. in saying that, he has improved the contested side of his game, and he has made some progress this year, which has been encouraging. Well, Frio's next with pick 13. You would think they have just about locked in a key position defender there as well. 
Mm. Yeah, and if a leather march bank or even a Goddard makes it, that I love Goddard, but um, yeah, one of those guys would make perfect sense. McFarlane, he'd be in his last year, surely. So, yeah, they definitely yep. do need someone down Mar- there. March bank would be a great fit for Frio, I yeah. think. Mm. It's yeah, definitely just an all-around game. He goes hard at it. It's, he's got an engine from what I can gather, and Ross loves players who can just run and run and run. Yeah, I'd agree with that too. And he also reads it so well, he can take the intercept mark. So he's got that yeah. package. Late year birthday, he's grown a bit the last few years, so potentially he could shoot up another couple of centimetres and for all we know, even become a genuine key defender. 193 is a genuine defender. A yeah. lot of, a lot oh, of the very good yeah. defenders over the time have not been that tall. Oh, yeah, you've got like... Uh, I think it's more important to be 195 if you're a forward than it is to be a defender. Yeah, that's my feel as well. With key forwards, you want one ninety three plus really. If you're a key defender, one ninety one plus seems for me the breaking point. Yep. yep. You've got the likes of Glass, Rudd, and they're both around that sort of height. But then they've got the size as well. So just being so strong, it almost compensates a bit for the lack of height. Where if you can really hold the big, big, big key forwards, you can still potentially make it in that position. Well, look, continuing on the uh, the key position defender love fest uh, is the Adelaide Crows are pick 14. And you'll yep. think if Durden's there, they'll pick him. you think if Goddard's there, um, they'll also pick him. Lever would be in the mix as well. Yeah, all of them. And Adelaide will probably just take the slider of that group, seems most likely. They could potentially take an outside type. They could use a bit of that as well. But, yeah, it depends on availability, depends on best available, depends a bit on their evaluation. So I, 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 well with Adelaide. I, I reckon a uh, Hearn would be an interesting one for them. Gives yeah. them some class outside, and they lack class outside. They do. Yep. Yeah, they do. They've got such a strong inside group that, yeah, I definitely strongly agree they do need something outside. But, yeah, again, down back as well. It's a concern as well with Rudd and Retired. They could do with someone else as well. Uh, pick, uh, pick 15 is Gold Coast's second pick. Uh, you would think Ellis, maybe even someone like Langford would be in the mix there. Yeah, the two that have been spoken about, and Langford particularly, if he's there for Gold Coast at 15, I'd say they'd take him. But, yeah, it might depend on Collingwood at five if they're as strongly into him as is being rumoured at the moment. So, yeah, that could be interesting. Alex could be one, maybe Weller at that stage. There's definitely a few in the mix. Yep. North Melbourne pick 16. I'm liking a, a Hearn there, I would think. Yeah, Hearn could be certainly in the mix. Alice could be in the mix. Weller could be in the mix. At that stage, there's just not too, too much clarity as to who will be the pick, who will be available. So it'll be a bit of a mixed bag. Potentially Garlic could be another, maybe Cockatoo. Yeah, pick... Garlic gets overlooked, I think, a bit. He's oh, yeah. got some yeah. real class about him. Oh, yeah, quick. He's got, the in... He's got the mix of speed and endurance. Pretty skilled. He can play wing. He can even go a bit of half back. I've seen him sort of push back, read it pretty well. So, yeah, dare, I, dare I say, for poor boys, he reminds me a bit of Peter Burgon when he was a junior. Mm. Mm. A lot of rough edges, but Jibs, there's a lot to work with. Essendon with pick 17, who are you liking there? Um, they'd probably like a slider. Um, maybe Weller if he makes it that far, though. That's far from guaranteed. They might like a Garlet potentially, maybe a Menadu, maybe Ahern, depending on availability. That'd be amongst those in the mix. What about a Tom Lamb starting to put his hand up around this? Yeah, he's, uh, the draft where he's that taller half forward. Okay. Yeah, it comes down to his practice. work rate's good and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, he's got the endur- endurance for sure. I query the hardness, I query the defensive side of his game, but in saying that, for Essendon and Carlton, that pick 19 is definitely considered strongly in the mix from that point. Pick 18, Sydney, they've already locked in Isaac Heaney and we spoke about uh, value picks before with Darcy Moore and Heaney looks like probably being the value pick of the draft. And I definitely strongly agree with that. Is I'd call him the most complete midfielder in this draft, actually. There's hardly a weakness to his game, if any. Pick 19, Carlton. Um, we mentioned Tom Lamb. Um, is someone like Reese McKenzie a bit of a chance to go um, at Carlton as well? Possibly not that early. Um, I'd Personally, I would be right on to Reese McKenzie at that stage, and Carlson could probably do with that key forward, depending on how high they are on Levi Casbolt. But guys like Lamb, Menadou, Garlett, they're probably the main ones that are being linked. I heard if he slides that far or someone else does. 
then potentially they could all be in that mix for Carlton as well at that point. So what's the yeah. knock on McKenzie? Because he's um, he's someone that's had a, a pretty good year. He's a good size. Um, is he just another sort of Ryan Willits or Billy Morrison type that's just um, so dominant because he's bigger, stronger, taller than uh, than his sort of fellow classmates um, at under-18 level? Yeah, it's a good question as well. Um, some just see him as a man-child. Some would sort of say he's so big and for that reason he just bullies guys at the under-18 level. And I sort of see why they see it that way, but... I just sort of see it a bit differently with him, where he's just someone where, yeah, he can definitely physically intimidate you at that level. But in saying that, he's got the attributes that actually work at AFL level. His strong overhead takes it at the highest point. He's got a massive leap on it, and he can mark it when he's leaping at the highest point. Amazingly explosive on the lead, so he's got more than enough to make it, I'd say. Well, I love the fact that he physically bullies the other kids, because someone his size should physically bully him. Right. Yeah, he can as well. Yeah. And then it's like you sit there and see his draft camp results. It's like all of a sudden it's, okay, this kid can move. Now, the guys that watch these guys week in, week out would have already worked out. This guy's actually got some pace off the mark. That would have been nothing new for them. But for Joe Blow Punter, it's been, oh, he's quick. Yeah. On my limited viewing, I would be looking at him early in the teams rather than around this mark. But... As I said, I haven't seen enough of them to really say who should go where. And the other thing as well, if you look at his stats, over the second half of the season, he just improved so rapidly. And when you've got that rapid improvement, you can sort of look from a long-term projection standpoint, which you do with the tolls a fair bit. And if you sort of track that rate of improvement, gee, if that continues, it can really be good. we got the power to win, power to roll. Well, look, let's uh, let's start talking about Port Adelaide's picks. We've got four picks in this draft. We've got 57, 75, 93, and 111. We've also got 129, which is um, already booked in for Kane Mitchell, who's being upgraded off the rookie list. Um, I think it's probably smart to maybe have a, a look at who we've lost from the list this year, which is one Ruckman in Renouf, who's four small defenders, a small forward in Hitchcock, and a midfielder in Ben Newton as well. Um, Mish, what sort of player types do you think Port will be looking at um, this draft? Okay. We've now got three Ruckman on our list, yep. thanks to Ryder coming across, which Indeed. is a coup in itself. So we're in this situation that we, even if we get nobody else draft, it's still been a winner for the club, I think. Yep. Um, but I would still think you know, I'll probably want to get put a Ruckman on the list, but <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they wait for the rookie draft Okay. and go, we'll just get somebody on there that we can work with. They're not going to play for us in the short term because, yeah, they so work, bring a kid in and spend some time developing him. Um, I would like another key forward on our list and yep. another key defender. Cool. And then, yep, yeah, then you just top it up with midfielders, I reckon. Now, it's easy to say add a key forward and key defender to your list, but when you're looking at pick 70s and all that sort of stuff, it's going to be pretty thin to what's available. Um, and I dare say they'll be sitting there on draft night. Pick 57 will come past and there's this midfielder that's fairly high on their list that's drifted down. And they'll be sitting there debating whether to take that versus the key position players available. And I'd expect them to take mid first time round yep. and go, we'll get one quality kid onto our list. <laughs> but I had to pick one probably... A Peter Bampton might be one where he's missed half of the year. He missed out on the under-18 champs. But, yeah, boy, he can play. I've seen some of his Sanford League games, and he's terrific, just such a strong midfielder. I th- I think you've got kids who can play league footy at 16 and don't taper off. They'll adjust to AFL-level footy. Because yeah. um, it wasn't as though he's just making up the numbers when he was 16. He was playing good footy. Um, he's always had that level as well like last year he was performing like he almost could play AFL which is amazing and if you actually play at that Sandful League level in my opinion anyway it almost proves in a way where you can already compete with the big bodies and you can pretty much just play at the next level you've got the right yep. mix of breaks and if you've got the performance yep. um, SNFL has really improved its pace 
So if you can play at that level, you're right. You can cope with the pace. You can cope with the physicality. And a lot of times the players find it a lot easier because the actual delivery of the ball around the ground is a lot more predictable. Dean Gore's probably another one that interests me in terms of uh, a local midfielder. He's 103 centimetres uh, from Sturt. He's quite a powerful midfielder, another one that's a, a bit of a boss on the inside. Um, he's someone that I would personally be hoping slides to up here. I'd be ecstatic. I watched him two years ago, and he just salivated at how good this kid could be. Um, it's he could, he could change games in 10 minutes of footy, and that's unusual. Yeah, and I strongly agree as well. Like, to the extent that I actually took him at 30 for the Pies in the Big Footy Phantom draft, so I'm definitely on board. He's got the form in the Sandful at league level. I've seen that. Strong tackler, wins his own ball. He can kick, he can kick at 50, 55 even. Strong yep. mark at the head, has a good lead, can kick a goal. He's definitely yep. a good one. If you can play in the midfield, play forward, you've got the state league level football and you've got the production at that level. You can take the next step. Indeed. Yep. Yep. Um, the other interesting one that I'm not getting him talked up a lot higher is um, Josh Glenn. I can't yeah. believe it. Look, I've, I've seen him play, and going by previous drafts, he should be getting talked up around pick 20. Uh, yeah, he's got that class as well. Like He looks like an AFL player now in the sand, but he's just got that level of class to him. You can play him anywhere. Such a good kick. Yeah, he's definitely yep. someone, if he's available at 57, he's, he'd be very high on my list for sure. No question. If he's there, um, Port would strongly be considering him because he's the exact sort of player that we'd be looking for. Sort of really good on the outside, can play back flank, can play midfield, can play on a wing. Um, very, very good football and has played some outstanding football for Centrals. Yeah, definitely agree as well. Like He's got the performances, he's got everything and yeah just his form at that level amazing he's got all the traits to make it at the next level um i even picked him at 48 in the pies phantom draft so you guys are on to all my favorites <laughs> but um yeah, he's definitely at well, that stage a very strong selection that probably indicates that you're up to speed with your sample football and a lot of a lot of the others aren't and that's yeah, the problem something where i just really value the level of performance at that level and i try and watch all the weekly ABC sort of broadcasts of it and the replays and yeah it's just a really strong standard of footy and actually having many of the good under 18s play at that level it's for me personally anyway really enjoyable to watch small that's interesting that might be around our pick is Nathan Drummond who missed out last year had a pretty big year this year he's another hard explosive midfielder um, could go anywhere from sort of you know sort of late second round onwards to maybe the rookie draft 181 centimeters he looks like mm -hmm. a real um, sort of hard at it, ready to go mid. Yeah, he's got that hardness. He can play midfield, back, probably forward if he wanted to, but is super explosive. If you've seen his testing, he's got that speed-endurance combination. He's got the hardness on the inside. He wins the ball, reads the ruck taps. So he's definitely got something. Perhaps his kicking could be cleaned up. Perhaps his decision-making could be cleaned up. A few rough edges, but nonetheless, he's definitely improved. He's got... Definitely with the athleticism, some AFL traits. So, yeah, mid-late draft, potentially, I'd definitely consider him, no doubt. Look, there's a couple <laughs> of other um, smalls that I want to talk about. And I say smalls because they are actually quite small. Um, I guess the first one is Caleb Daniel, who's, you know, super high on talent, but very, very short. He'd actually, I think he would be the, the shortest player since uh, Tony Liberatore if he was drafted. You know, could go sort of anywhere from, you know, third round or miss out completely. Yeah, there was something on him where he was actually saying in, I think it was the TAC Cup broadcast where he was, oh, sorry, the Under-18 Champs broadcast, rather, that he was 167 and he really tried to make a point of that <laughs> rather than 166. But yeah, he shot one a bit like Brett Harvey where he just runs all day. Amazing skill set. If you've seen his work in close, phenomenal. His disposal efficiency was something like 91% over the Under-18 Champs. So he can just use it so cleanly, yeah, it's just and he's an another that's uh, got the job done um, at SANFL senior level as well. Yeah, he has, no doubt as well. Um, yeah, he's done it at that level, under-18 champs. He just looks a class above. And the one criticism maybe would be a slight lack of speed, but nonetheless he's working on it. And Yeah, if he puts that work in, adds that extra speed, yeah, potentially he could be another where he's got an opportunity to have an AFL career, which would be a terrific outcome for 
Go at 166 Is that to sort of sub 170 centimetre yeah. stigma too much to overcome for AFL clubs, though? Yeah, that's the question. And as a result, he'll probably slide into the rookie draw. When you're that sort of small, if you're 170, less than 175, say, it's just very hard to get drafted unless you have a real point of difference. Daniel does, but it's just recruiters, I get the sense, probably want a bit more pace from him. Okay. Ten, ten years ago, there's no chance to get onto a list. Um, two years ago, South Adelaide were talking him up as being draftable, and the recruiters just sort of laughed behind their backs, going, no, nah, no way. Um, watching the kid back then, he really knew how to get the footy, had all the courage in the world and all this sort of stuff, but his ball use was rather poor. Oh, wow. And that's something that's Great really, job. really amazed me watching him this year is how much he's tidied up his ball use. There's a lot of work in, yeah. So, Only getting exposed to his play this year, but, yeah, that's really interesting. Then. So that I, I was amazed watching him use the footy at the carnival because like, everybody's picked up his good use and then I'm sitting and watching the game back going, wow, you've really tidied it up. And it's not as though he's taken the easy alternative of just kicking sideways to easy targets. He's hitting good targets up forward. Oh, yeah, he's got the, the use, got the decision, um, got the clean foot skills, he's got the vision up front, he's, he can spot the inside 50 targets. He's got the right mix of foot skills, decision-making, vision. Yeah, he's got that whole side to him, so he can definitely play. Another uh, bit of a midget is uh, Jakey Johansson. He's a local port boy. Um, played some very, very good SNFL footy for Port Adelaide at league level. Um, only 170 centimetres, had a very, very good carnival, was the, uh, the South Australian state captain. Um, but he's sort of fallen off a cliff in terms of um, his positioning at AFL level. He has a little bit. Um, it's probably the last two under-18 champs games. His kicking efficiency was... Well, he's just kicking in general. is just all over the place. Disposal efficiency, probably not as high as it should be. But nonetheless, he can really rack it up. Sample level, under-18 champs. He's got the performance on the board, but mm. just probably a few things need to be cleaned up for mine anyway. Yeah, his disposal isn't, isn't effective enough under pressure at this point in time. So... He's one who, because of his size, he may just have to bide his time in the SNFL and prove that he can play midfield at that level before he gets his shot. Yeah, sorry. So the problem with clubs is they can't put someone like Jake Johansson on their list and go, we'll give him four years to develop. And the small guys generally take four years. They're almost like a ruckman. You have to give them the four years to develop. Um so a lot of them are better off just developing in the state league and then picking out the ones as they get to 20 and go, yep, now we'll give you a shot. Look, uh, on the other side of the spectrum is uh, someone like Matthew Panos, who's obviously been in the system before with the Western Bulldogs. He's completely changed his game around this year, turning from a, a key position forward um, into a, a, a big inside midfielder. Had a huge year at SANFL level, was, uh, was best on ground in the grand final. Um, do we see him getting drafted? He's certainly got a chance, no doubt. Um, he's got a good skill set. Tall midfielders, they're in demand, so you never know. He definitely has to improve his endurance to make it at the next level. He's probably not. He won't be around one starter. It'll take a bit of time. But, yeah, potentially a late draft rookie. He'd definitely be attractive for a few teams, I'd say. Well, look, someone else I want to talk about in terms of smalls is someone that, uh, that was playing for Port Adelaide this year as well, in Nathan Cracker. Obviously, he's played... Report Adelaide at AFL level before, um, moved to Gold Coast, um, then quit the AFL. He came back this year through the Magpie system, played some very, very good football um, in a back pocket and a back flank for the Port Adelaide Maggies. Um, do we see Port Adelaide taking a bit of a punt on him? No. Nah. No. Nah. Too oh, old. Not worth it. No. Nah. Yeah, at best, you get a couple of years out of him, rather... With our list the way it is, try and find another kid, drag him in. He's going to be at the club for 10 years. Yeah, I'd probably be inclined to say there's a few better options as well, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think he'll get another opportunity, at least at this stage. Oh, that's fair enough. That's a fair call. Again, if, a... if he dominated SNFL, yeah. But he didn't dominate. He... No, he didn't. No. Yeah, he like had those... a solid season. 
Yeah, he shows flashes in games, does some good things, but his numbers, I think AFL clubs for someone at that age would want probably a bit more dominance, I'd say. Yeah. A guy like I say, think as, a, uh, as an experienced backup for a sort of pretty young defensive group, it might, be, it might make sense, but I tend to agree that I think we'll overlook him. Well, let's have a chat about Ruckman, because uh, it's obvious that we, we probably need another Ruckman on our list. Um, I guess the most popular um, name at the moment would be Sam Boulderstone, who's a, a local guy, played for Nord, played some very, very good state league footy for them. 203 centimetres, 110 kilos. We all know his story, how he's lost 40-odd kilos this year, or sorry, in the last two years. Um, fitness might be an issue. He also doesn't ru uh, jump at Ruck contests. Um, I guess the big question is, can he convert into an AFL player? Yeah, it'll definitely be a challenge, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, firstly, I'd like to say the improvement that he's shown has been absolutely incredible, making that transformation. It's great commitment to his footy, great professionalism shown, so I definitely commend him for that. Um, skill set, pretty good. Um, but, yeah, he is definitely a ground-bound ruckman, so you do consider that as well. Um, but yeah, potentially as a rookie pick, there's no real standout. So yeah, maybe he could be one amongst a mix of players. That could be a chance. Sam's one that you put on your list, I think, if you want to back up Ruckman for next year. Not if you're trying to develop somebody who can become an elite AFL Ruckman. So it's, what are you trying to do with this Ruckman you're putting on the list? Is he just to... If we lose three Ruckman, then he's going to play and hold us in reasonable stead. Or do you go for a younger Ruckman who's around 20, who shows you athleticism and skills but hasn't quite dominated at the level they're playing at yet? Yeah, and that's what will be weighed up as well. Like, Do you take, say, a Tom Reed as a project guy or maybe a Mark Kovacevic as another example? Or perhaps there's someone like, say, a Paul Hunter who's a bit older, from Queensland, he could be another potential option. There's others around. Paul Hunter's probably the one that interests um, me the most. He's a, another mature age guy, 21 years old, 200 centimetres. Was best and fairest for Redlands in the Queensland, uh, in the NEAFL. Yeah, he definitely has um big improver as well. Um, he's had his troubles with injury, but um, yeah, actually sort of getting his body together. Yeah, you never know. He could potentially take another step in an AFL environment. So yeah, as a rookie, he could be. A potentially interesting option. Um, have you seen Doug Cameron play this year? I've seen a bit of him. He played a bit of um, waffle at league level early on, went back to reserves, um, probably dwindled off a bit. I was hoping for a bit more. Um, yeah, probably not for me, but um, he's someone where I'd still consider looking out for him beyond this year if he does happen to develop. He's good height, got a bit of ability, can rock and sometimes go forward and take a mark. So. It could be an option down the road, but this year... 204 centimetres is a bit of height, isn't it? Yeah, it's useful, <laughs> that's for sure. Definitely useful. Uh, Mark Pittanet is another one that interests me. He's 201 centimetres, a, a basketball convert, very aggressive player, good tap ruckman. Um, I guess the question is, will he still be there at our pick? Yeah, and he's considered... He's probably going to be the first of the late pick ruckman, I suppose, taken, and he's considered to be in the mix late, so... He could be another option, potentially. He's competitive in the rock. Um, probably not as good as I'd like on the ground. I'd like to see him find a bit more of it. But, yeah, with the Ruckman taken late, you can't sort of be too choosy. There's no massively amazing ones at that late stage. Yep. Good thing about somebody like Mark is you're not picking a stick figure. Yeah. So you're not going to have to put them away for two years to just bulk them up until they get to his size. Yeah, and it's the same story with Kovacevic as well. He's another big one, and I'd actually say he'd, of those probably 18-year-olds, be almost the better option in the sense that he can go forward, take him up, competitive ruck as well, but that'd be amongst the sort of consideration. Right, on to a key position players. Um, one name that's talked about a fair bit is Brett Eddy, who's played for South Adelaide, uh, played some good VFL footy um, a few years before that as well. He's pretty... Um, one of the best um, key forwards outside of the AFL system, 194 centimetres. He, he plays a lot like Jack Gunson. He, he's not a big-bodied um, position forward, but he might be able to play a role as a third toll. Is Eddie really 194? <laughs> I wouldn't have thought he was anywhere near that. That's what he's uh, listed as, I think. 
Yeah, he's got that mobile feel where you'd think he's smaller. He's a guy where he can turn on a dime, is that good? And um, I've had some good times watching him, actually, for the Collingwood VFL back in the day. Yeah. And he was trick at the time then. And I'm not too surprised that he's actually going so well in the sand. I was a bit surprised with his what he sort of struggled yeah. to do last year, but with injury happens. But yeah, yeah, he's a good one, best key forward outside the AFL if you want. At least a depth guy, I'd say. Yeah, Eddie's probably the pick. And um, great performances as well in the sample, particularly over the first half of the season. He was out and out dominating at the time. Yes. Looking at his numbers. Yep, he was good. Uh, Another one that uh, that will be around our pick is Matt Hamelman, who's uh, 198 centimetres, a bit similar to, to someone like Justin Westhoff. He's a bit rangy, um, good sort of tall leading forward, um, maybe a bit of X factor as well. Yeah, he's definitely terrific on the lead, good height, interesting prospect overall. Um, a bit surprising for me that Brisbane skipped on him, but I sort of see why in the sense that he's a one-trick pony. Very quick on the lead, does multiple leads, smart on the lead, but the one thing that he does do is lead, and after that you're sort of querying him, querying what's his sort of second move, I suppose. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if or where he gets drafted. Because, you know, late draft, he could be one of the potentially... Better key forwards, but yeah, if looking for a key forward, I wouldn't be inclined to pick one late because historically all the good ones, they go first, second round, father, son, alternative pathways, Absolutely. those sort of things. So yeah, I probably wouldn't want to take one too late unless it's maybe a bread eddy as a so I think we did the thing. figures last year, Mish, and, a, and it ended up being something like three players out of the last... Uh, what fifteen drafts that were any good as a as a late draft? Rookie, rookie <laughs> draft that draft ever showed it's anything. A, it's pretty much like a like finding a gold nugget, really. Um, Is Jack Jack Cripps any chance to get that far? Um, yeah, potentially, and he seems like a bit of a late pick, and he's quite interesting in the sense that his numbers at um, the waffle sort of Colts level has been pretty reasonable, good height bit of promise but um yeah he looks potentially like a mid late maybe even rookie draft pick so yeah maybe he is available don't just count it that's it he, again let's just see as a trick footballer he's really only been in the wa this year like i know i know he's got the family connections but yeah it's he seemed to be developing as the year went by Another guy um, from West Adelaide, Desi Watchman, who was an AIS graduate, 196 centimetres, fell off a cliff this year, pretty much, um, in terms of his football. Um, has gone from a very, very highly rated under 16 year old to uh, to possibly not even getting drafted at all. Will someone take a punt on him, or has he missed out on his opportunity? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible late rookie draft that he gets a chance, and given what he showed in past years, yeah, I can sort of see why, but yeah, it's just. For me personally, a bit disappointing that he didn't sort of take that next step and really advance his game further, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he places. Um, for me personally, I like the really improving key forwards that are yeah. continuing to take the next step, unless they're out and out dominating, in which case maybe you'd reconsider. But yeah, just with the key forwards, I'd be wanting the really dominant ones. And at this yeah. stage, I'm not sure Watchman is that. But yeah, maybe as a rookie, someone takes a chance. When I watched Watchman this year, he was poor. Uh, you could see West Adelaide were trying to give him opportunities, but uh, his just form was poor. Now, somebody may have enough faith in his form from last year to back him. But, oh, he, yeah. The problem is with somebody like him, you don't know whether he's carrying a leg injury that sort of like takes the edge out of their game. And mm. um, when they get fit again, they're okay. But. Mm. Yeah, based, based on his form, you couldn't pick him this year. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that very much, yeah. In terms of key defenders, uh, Daniel Nielsen, he might be someone around our pick, 193 centimetres from Eastern Rangers. Pretty good defender, pretty good stopper. Yeah, he's very much a stopper. Not an offensive player, but look, he's someone where you can say, take this guy, he'll play a role. He can get stops, he can, to an extent, with some influence. So, yeah, if you're looking for that sort of role player, he could be potentially someone who could be looked at. Yep. Um, but in saying that, um, with the key defenders as well, we have in the past seen some good looking stories, I suppose. Even looking at your neighbour next door in Adelaide, they've picked guys like Rudd and Bock out of the rookie draft. Yep. So 
<laughs> it's possible with those key defenders and Absolutely. Collingwood as well. As a Collingwood fan, we got I think it was Jack Frost, um, Michael Hartley as well. He was an ex rookie for Collingwood. If you want someone a bit older, it's someone as well where if you just want a pure negating role player and that sort of press geocono mold, he could be someone. Um, there's some guys out in New South Wales who's developing players that could potentially get a position down back at some stage down the road with further development. So. Yeah, there's a few options for key defenders. Potentially. And then there's one probably close to home in Keenan Ramsey. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it just depends on availability with him. If he's there yep. at seven, if he is, then yeah, he should definitely be considered in the mix. Mish, do you want to put your balls on the line and uh, and give us a bit of a pick of who we're going to get? Oh, could we just please pick Jack Loney at pick 57? I just want to see everybody's reaction when they see another Loney coming to Port Especially Adelaide. Especially one that's bloody 172 centimetres and weighs 38 kilos or something. Yeah, it's a bit of a different one, um, the young Loney. Um, he's a cousin of Ryan and Nathan, obviously, um, but he's more a short forward, probably in the Hayden Ballantyne mould. That's the comparison that comes up. Probably not quite on that level, obviously, with Ballantyne going on and doing good things lately. But, um, yeah... Good kick, but sometimes inconsistent. Has a bit of hardness to him. Probably not super quick or a natural crummer. But, yeah, he's someone with a bit of ability. And, yeah, probably a late draft will get picked up by someone, I'm sure. Uh, what I liked when I saw him was he was hard at the footy, which shocked me. I was like, Lonely the one thing and hardness, I'm, never I'm, I never thought I'd hear uh, these two words in the same sentence ever again. <laughs> yeah, it must have come from the other side <laughs> of the family, I think. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's a different one. Pick <laughs> <laughs> uh, 57. Oh, now, who do I really want? Um, God. It could get someone sliding like a Clem Smith. You never quite know. So that mm. could be one if you want to get pop fans excited. But, yeah, probably a Banton or Glenn would be mine anyway. Yeah. That's the uh, true. Say, if they slide, they're my picks. Oh, just be so stoked if we got Glenn at 57. All right. I don't actually want to think of it as a possibility. Yeah, I'd love because it. I'll just get disappointed when they pick somebody else in front of them. I mean, is it, is it possible that the Crows might uh, jump in ahead? Yeah, it is possible. But in saying that, they probably need a few outside guys more. So you can probably reasonably hope that I'd pass on him. Mm. But, um, but Dean Moore, who you guys mentioned a bit earlier, I... Don't expect he'll be there at 57. The worst case scenario, he goes maybe in the 40s, but even so, probably the 30s would be my best guess. Yep. Um, what do you think of Ed Langdon? Uh, he hasn't played too much, but in the games he has played, he's been pretty good. Um, very different to Tom. He's a small forward, exceptionally quick. That's for sure he can take on the game. Got a bit of class. Um, you'd like to see a few more performances on the board. Um, I think it was the one, or I don't know if it was two games he played in the under-18 champs. He showed really good signs in those games. Um, his TAC Cup games, pretty lean performances, but in saying that, there's enough to pick him on based on the traits he's got, based on the things he's shown in game, even if it is in little spurts. Um, yeah, probably mid-draft he'll go, I'd say. So no chance getting straight to 57? You never say never, but in saying yep. that, I'd probably say 30s, 40s, that's probably where he lands. Just with the outstanding draft combine, all the talk is of late that he'll probably go higher rather than lower. What about Lucas Webb? Um, yeah, he's expected to go quite high as well. Um, incredible kick, got some versatility, but yeah, put, um, recent rumours actually saying Bulldogs as early as maybe 26 or 27. Oh, okay. okay. But, um, in saying that, yeah. A little stuff that one up. <laughs> I hadn't heard his name mentioned. But yeah, in the 30s or 40s, that's probably about where he'll land, I assume. Um, yeah, maybe he could slide, but um, I wouldn't be picking him early. Maybe late draft, yeah, it could be a consideration if there, but I don't think he will be available. Would be my best guess. All right, who's going to be the big um, slider? Who's going to be the, the talking point? Because there's always a player that's rated pretty highly that ends up going really, really late or misses out completely. Yeah, I've probably got Banton and Glenn at this stage. Um, Clem Smith as well. He was hyped up coming into the year. Showed great signs last year in the under-18 champs. Um, but he's sort of remained the same player. A bit almost over-aggressive, if that can be said. He'll almost... He's got that white line fever where he's almost Brian Byron Pickett in a way, where he's just that hard, that aggressive. He wants to take off your head. That's his mindset entirely. And it'll be interesting to see how he goes at the next level. But... 
Um, yeah, with poor endurance testing at the Combine, hasn't shown great kicking during the year. So, yeah, there's a few things that are queries that could probably see him drop, and he'd be my pick as a slider if there was anyone. That's a big name anyway. Yep. Um, of the not-so-big names, I reckon Kavka's a good chance to slide. Mm. Yeah, and if he's available as well, he'd be a terrific pick. Um, I'm expecting he goes probably around 30, but, yeah, look, you never know. Amazing endurance. I think, what was his testing a 6-7 early in the year on a beep? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, terrific athlete. Um, can play forward, midfield. He has the versatility in terms of roles. Um, yeah, so he's definitely someone probably, even around 30, I'd be prepared to pay for Kavka. So, um, yeah, it would be a pick for whoever takes him. Yeah. So. Versatility of roles, that's always an interesting one. I mean, and I have it with Tagoe sometimes. It's like, it means you haven't been able to master one yet. Mm. And with Kavka as well, like he, he played a pretty good negating role a few times at time. He can win the ball through the midfield. He can go forward and hit the scoreboard. His final series was big if he caught any of his tight cup finals. Yeah. It was really almost the player of the final series. So, But um, yeah, best position. It'll be interesting to see where he settles. Some people liken him to maybe a Brett Stanton where maybe on a wing he could make it as that sort of outside runner, high accumulator without being the best user of the ball. Um, bit yep. of a goal scorer. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. But, yeah, he's someone I'm relatively optimistic about to an extent. He's that borderline, will he make it, won't he, probably will make it sort of thing. Where maybe around 30, yeah, he could be a good pick for a team maybe. But, um, yeah, if he slips late into the draft, gosh, at 57, he'd be a great pick. And what about a bolter? Who's going, to, who's going to shoot up the rankings in the next few days? Could we see someone like a Edward Vickers Willis uh, go in the first round? Um, potentially. Um, the talk is he probably slides. Um, maybe a gallop could go a bit earlier yep. than expected. Um, maybe yep. even in the teens, potentially. Hasn't been spoken about too much. Um, Blakey's an yeah. interesting one. I think, mm. I think he gets overlooked. Where he should really be talked up and makes it top 20. So it just needs one club to take him early. Um, and I reckon he's worth a almost top 10 pick. Does that sound some his performance? No, no, that's not crazy. That's yeah. not crazy from what I've seen. But, so um, he'd be my one that... but he's such an immediate midfielder. He's so good already, so developed. Um, but he's got that all round midfield game. Um, he, he actually moves quicker in traffic than he does on the outside. Um, great user of the ball, contested ball numbers, tackling clearances. He's got the complete package. Probably can't go forward or doesn't have that versatility to him. But, yep. yeah, he's definitely but, a player. And I'd love him at 30 as a Pies fan, but whether yeah. that is another story. I, when I first watched him, I just sat there and finished watching him and went, Simon Black, <laughs> hit your heart yeah. out. That's yes. a good comparison, actually. Yeah, if he, has, he does potentially have that sort of career potential, that's for sure. Yeah. And Mish, who is the player that you absolutely don't want Port to pick? Because, of course, we picked that player last year. Oh, God. Two, two. I don't want Dylan Vanjo Rainbow. Please don't let him slide. The first guy that comes to mind for me, um, this is, yeah, I've seen a bit of him during the year, and there was particularly game one of the under-18 champs. I don't know if anyone was there. But um, Rory Sheridan Ferry, I just personally wouldn't pick him. He had that sort of feel of Mitch Morton where good talent, but he's just he didn't really have the right attitude, I suppose. Came out a minute late into the game, well, for the warm-up, rather. Um, <laughs> for a ground ball drill, um, they were just throwing the balls. They had to catch it, and it was a case of he dropped something like nine of ten ground balls. Everyone else was clean. First half, he just wasn't attention, and it was yeah. pretty pathetic, to be honest. But yeah, if okay. I, one guy I wouldn't pick, probably Rory. And yep. he's considered potentially a later rookie pick. So it'll be interesting to see if he goes. But, yeah, just for me, based on just that exhibition alone, let alone the other games, I probably okay. wouldn't. Yep. Okay, I'll work it out. Harrison Week is the one okay. I don't want. Just the name, is it? No, no. He loves kicking sideways all the time. Okay. Short sideways kicks, don't want them. Um, Lucas Webb's probably my... Love child of who I was hoping to get through. There's a good kick show versatility. Um, there's probably some other kickers around. Um, just think of. 
some. Um, Garrett McDonough, I don't know if you guys have seen him. I don't think he played under-18 champs, but um, no. yeah, the guy can kick. Whew. He can kick at 60, lace out. He's another sort of almost Josh Toy sort of thing where just down back, he just mops it up. Ball use, probably the best in the draft, just about. But, yeah, just that's his one trick. So it depends yep. on if that's what you want. But if you're looking for a pure kicker off the back flank doing damage, he'd probably be the guy. Where, and he'll probably be available as a rookie as well. So he'd be someone to look out for that type of player, I suppose. Yeah. Mish, thanks for coming back on. No worries, that's fine. Let's hope it's another interesting draft like last year. Oh, it's always an interesting draft. It is my favourite day of the football calendar, I have to say. I love draft day. And Nightmare, thank you very, very much for coming on and, and giving your thoughts on the players. No worries, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Until next time, boys, go Port Adelaide. Go Power. Go Pies. <laughs> oh, you, you have to. Come you, on. I bet you'll cut that one off at the end. Oh, that's staying in. That's definitely staying in. Gray <laughs> <laughs> was brave. Running hard, more getting forward. One last chance. Boat brilliant. Wines. Montfrey's centering ball. Cassisi. Hot <laughs> <laughs> It's a freak.